what I am ready to say is, you know, Jerome Powell continues to talk the talk. The market chose to listen to him today for whatever reason. And I'll say this, you know, 210 is going to 100, 104 right now. It didn't stop. They said, you know, we don't need to stop at one. Let's go to 1.04 percent inversion. I mean, that's problematic. Again, I say it. I'm not an economist. I'm not smart enough nor humorless enough. Steve will handle that on the back end. But, you know, that is a problem for the economy. You mentioned 42 years. I think the last time it was like 15 percent, 14 percent. And things didn't fare particularly well. So we'll see. I think the market is realizing that higher rates should not be bullish for stocks. We're also going to hear from him tomorrow, though. So I think we have to really sort of temper that. I, I, I said last night on the show, I wasn't sure. I thought the Senate was going to push him dovish. I'm not sure that happened. I don't think he sounded dovish. But what, it, what is the House going to push him? Dovish or, 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 or hawkish? Probably hawkish, right? Well, They're going to demand fiscal responsibility. It's, it's, but they're going to push back, as Senator Warren did, on, on raising unemployment, right? They, I mean, you're, they, you're gambling with people's lives, she said, with this hope that, that, you know, rising unemployment will tamper down inflation. You know, this is the first time ever I feel as if I agree with Elizabeth Warren on anything. I feel, I feel and, and, his comeback, and his comeback was, should we do nothing? Uh -huh. And there was a lot of people who's, who were probably there saying, I don't know. Maybe maybe we should do nothing. I, how do you prove or disprove the counterfactual on whatever he's talking about? So let's wait till tomorrow. Let's see yeah. what the market digests tomorrow. We, we don't know. And that's the thing. And, you know, Ken Griffin was on Bloomberg and he said the Fed is in uncharted territory. I mean, that is a fact of the matter. We don't know what the impacts are. We don't know how it will impact. We don't know if it will work in the end. You know, we don't know, and this fiscal stimulus that we've had is kind of like the X factor here, and I think that is what brings us into this unknown situation. So, you know, you can say perhaps they should do nothing, but isn't that exactly what we slammed them for? Being late, what was the saying? Late to the party and staying too long. So now they well, are. Well, they got to start active. doing nothing at a certain point. Uh, okay. They can't, they, well, you know, you can't argue that they're going to do nothing now. They should have done nothing before. They've done a yeah. lot. No, we yeah. just haven't seen the effects. No, no, right. no, no, no. Exactly. They, they, sh they shouldn't have done nothing before. They should have gotten involved much earlier. Right. They should have shown up earlier and perhaps headed off and understood what this fiscal stimulus was going to do to help avoid the situation that we're in now. That, that, that's what I would posit. With, with that said, you know what I. I what I thought was interesting is what he also said when, was, when he was questioned was, it's very important that we get inflation expectations under control because that essentially is the linchpin uh, or, or what underscores how people are going to make their spending and saving decisions. And I think that's very important. I think the economy, you know, while they perhaps were fighting back, if you look at Fed funds rate, they didn't really sound like they bought into the higher for longer situation. It seems like markets today started to buy into the narrative of we may be going higher fast. And I think that's what shocked markets. I think we had all thought, at least if we're going to end up higher, we're, we've tapered the pace of rates. And that seemed to be turned on its head today. I feel like he has been hawkish, hawkish, hawkish. All of them. All along, right? right? Like, and they like send out this, the hawks. With the markets, right? like, yes. listen to us, right. listen to us. And so it's surprising to me that today, all of a sudden, oh, my God, look at how hawkish right. he is. So I agree with you, Bron. They probably should have started in 2018 when they did that quick U-turn on raising rates. That, to me, seemed a mistake. It's always painful to raise rates. It's never easy. But I think he's doing the right thing. I always am amazed at how... There seems to be somewhat of a lack of understanding of some of, of how some of the economy works when they keep pounding on him. And yet fiscal policy, right, is not helping. Right. It's not helping him at all. So, you know, he's in a tough spot. I sort of think he's doing the right thing. We've heard a lot about, well, you know, the the effects of these rates are going to take time. We're really, you know, he's really threatening the, the economy. I guess, you know, that's why you'll see the, the further out bond curve was didn't really move anywhere remotely close to what the near right. part of the curve did. I, I think he's doing the right thing. It's painful. But the alternative is to for runaway inflation. And that's what he said. He said, right. would you rather? Would you rather yes. have it? He wouldn't he's playing would you rather himself. He said that's better for yeah. Would you rather people have their jobs but have right. five or six percent? But does he have control? More? But does he have control? No exactly. But does he have control? over where you see the runaway inflation. We've talked about this from the start, mm -hmm. that the tools that he has can't control where the inflation really is. It was a supply chain disruption out of a 100-year-old pandemic that we had it, and now we're expecting Jerome Powell to handle it with his fiscal policies or monetary policies.